Hey everybody, uh, I wasn't planning on doing any review on this particular quad, but uh, when I received it I was so impressed with the way that it was packaged and the quality of the components that I wanted to do a review even though reviews are not something that I have done previously. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick a quick uh, overview of what came in the in the package. Um, obviously you can see the the frame components came with a couple of stickers uh, it came with a checklist uh, hand checked obviously they're just trying to show that they, they went through and uh, they did give you everything that comes in your quad so if you have any questions of something missing you have a, a checklist to reference anyways it, it came very neatly packaged um, these here were inside here uh, with the hardware, just like that. Um, anyways, it was all one neat, really neat package. Uh, and uh, anyways, I was just really impressed. I'm gonna build this quad uh, and I can continue my review and let you know how it, uh, how it flies, how it builds. Um, just as a point of reference, here's my current quad. Uh, it's a knockoff QAV frame, um, Naze 32, uh, I've got some RC Timer Race Editions, these are the, the non-red version, they're, I think they're putting out about 600 grams of uh, thrust each. Anyways, so that gives you a point of reference for me. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll cut later to where I actually put this thing together and let you know how it goes. Uh, the one the one thing I did notice is there is no, there's no build instructions. So uh, you're gonna have to rely on your genius or rely on your Google Foo. So that's it for now. I do, I do like the color. I ordered the Cobalt, uh, rather they do have a red version. Um, I opted for the LED. I was hoping they would include the carbon fiber plate and the LED, but they didn't. Um, anyways, that is all. So I've got my arms in there and my battery strap, and uh, we'll see how this thing goes together. We'll uh, let me cut forward. Okay, guys. So here's a mid-build update. Um, just wanted to give you uh, my experience so far. Um, cut quality of the parts is really good. Um, as it should be coming from Arma 10. They have a good uh, reputation for that. Uh, the cons, I'll just get those out of the way so I don't forget them. The sunk, the, what they call the sunk nuts. These little, these little silver guys here. There we go. They sit inside the frame on the bottom. So, if I can focus here. Okay. Alright, so these these silver guys right here, they sit inside the inside the frame, the bod the, the main plate, and uh, basically act as a permanent nut in there. One of those um, was what was not was not fit. It didn't fit. The hole was too big and uh, so it didn't actually hold itself in and I had to super glue it. Uh, that one right there, you can see a little bit of the super glue right around the edge. Anyways, and uh, one of one of the other ones started to spin. Um, I think it was that. This one is not is uh, spinning a little bit. Anyways, so that hole was not was not right. It was a little bit too big. The other thing that was a uh, quality mishap or something that was off was on this anti-rotation plate for the VTX, this carbon fiber triangle thing. Um, see how the SMA kind of sits in there like that? And then you have the rubber O-ring in between the uh, VTX plate there. So you have the anti-rotation plate, the O-ring in the middle, and then the VTX plate on the back. Um, the SMA, my, my connector, that gold square, did not fit did not fit in there. Now I remember watching, uh, or I think it was Chris did the uh, original build because he's one that designed the frame at least. And uh, he said it was supposed to fit those 
pretty much any any of them, but I had to use my hobby knife and whittle down the carbon fiber until it fit in there just right. Uh, so that that was kind of an oversight. I, uh, I would assume they could make it a little bit bigger, um, and it would still perform the anti-rotation function. The other thing was this this mount for the camera. Now I like how they mounted it, and I I think it's a pretty clever right, clever way to do it. However, they did not include any instructions, and this was <clears throat> at least for me it was took a little bit of thinking to to figure out exactly how they wanted me to do that. You can see here, I just bypassed the regulators. Um, I'm just going to send battery voltage to my camera and to my transmitter because they can both take the 4 cell uh, lipo voltage so I just hop, I just jumped those so I can use these these pads I think it'll make the build a little bit cleaner um, I could just tap into the battery voltage here but none of these pads these three big ones and then these three and these three none of them have voltage at all or power at all unless you uh, use regulators or bypass the regulators. Uh, that's it. Alright everybody, so here's the final bit of my build. Uh, I went out and actually flew it today. This is it completed. Just want to go over how, kind of how it went. Um, I actually went pretty well uh, for, for the size. It, this is a, again SCX 200, 200 millimeters across. It was pretty good. It was a compact build, um, but not as complex as I kind of thought it would be. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how well you can see in there, but basically, there we go. Basically, you can see the flight controller, then the and the video transmitter have places to be mount to. Uh, they have mounting points, but my uh, X4 RSB. FR Sky Receiver. I just kind of wedged in between there. To make it fit, I had to cut off or remove the pins and just uh, direct solder onto that receiver. So, uh, and I think that's a very good spot for it. Um, build went really well. Um, the bits align really well. So, you really only have these four screws here. If you if you do these four screws first, come on, there we go. These four first. Um, the alar the arms align each other, and so everything else, these other bits, they go in very well, very easily, very nicely. So that's good. Uh, only one screw per arm. The top plate just has a as a build note you'll see has a little bit of bow to it um, so it presses down on the camera plate and the rear LED or uh, just mounting plate. Um, the other pro I would say for the SCX200 is the customer service for for this emailing they're, they're so good at uh, communicating They've answered all my questions as dumb as they may be, or as annoying as I may be as far as uh, asking questions or uh, trying to clarify things. They went so far as to try to help me get my LEDs working when I was having trouble getting those working, so that was that was really cool. Um, anyways, I, I have these uh, RC Timer Race Edition motors. They're putting out oh, at least a thousand grams of thrust Per. I think with the tri-blades, they're, they're a little higher than that, which is literally double the power-to-weight ratio uh, of my last quad, which was basically a uh, QAV type uh, frame. Anyways, uh, that's it. I think I gave you all my negatives in the previous section, so if you have any questions um, or you want to see some other footage of this thing, let me know in the comments below or shoot me a message if you can do that okay thanks quick one other thing I forgot to mention this was something that I was was concerned about but doesn't seem to be that big of a deal
Okay, so here in the front, if my camera will focus, okay, there we go. You will see the clearance on this bad boy is really, really tight. So much so that if I put the lens cap on, oh, well, I, oh, I angled it up. So I had this camera angled down just a little bit. Um, and, uh, oh man, it was so tight. I couldn't, I couldn't put the lens cap on without the blades touching the camera. So that's something to be aware of, is the fact that that's so, so tight. Uh, you put, you angle the camera down, um, anyways, and sometimes if you wreck, like I did, I flew it today and I wrecked, the, uh, rubber bushings on the mount plates will allow just a little bit of lateral movement, and so the propellers will actually brush up against, you can see here how the propeller's damaged, it'll brush up against the, uh, metal ring around the lens. So that was something, I took pictures of it, I sent it to Armitan and asked them if that was normal because this is an HS1177 camera, they said it was designed for this camera, uh, and I asked them if that was normal and they said it looked similar to the builds they've done and that I shouldn't have any problems. I have not had any major problems, um, and uh, I, don't, I don't anticipate any more, especially since I angled the camera up, I have a little bit more play. Anyways, uh, that is all. In case you're interested to see the angle of the camera there, it looks like it's probably about 40 degrees, I think. I don't know. Maybe 45. Who knows? Anyways, that's all. I'll uh, talk to you later. Thanks for watching.